Hi, everybody. I am James Blackman from Enterprise IoT Insights. Welcome to this interview session, which works like a fireside chat of sorts. It's with Airbus. The title is uh, the Airbus Roadmap to Scale 5G Across Manufacturing Use Cases and Plants. Uh, and I might just say to introduce that Airbus is, is arguably the leading company for a private cellular in the industrial space at the moment, certainly in terms of its experience and uh, Apparently, in terms of its expansion progress, uh, I would suggest as well. Uh, so I am delighted to be able to uh, introduce Hakim Ashuri, who is 5G and IoT expert for digital aviation at Airbus. Uh, and Hakim can tell us all about it. So welcome, Hakim. It's great to have you with us. Hello. Thank you. So uh, just for everybody who's tuning in, this is a straight interview session where I'll ask the questions and Hakim will give the answers and provide us with a picture of how this stuff all works and how it scales and we have just under 30 minutes on the clock so Hakeem let's start um, and maybe uh, we can start Hakeem with you know the Airbus view of the market how do you see uh, progress so far with with kind of industry for slash digital change in manufacturing and, and you know private cellular in, in manufacturing as well well, to me, it's evolving to the right in the right direction. To be to be fair, um, we started four years ago. It was a bit too early somehow. Um, today, we see that in many countries, you know, we have more uh, spectrum harmonization. This is a key challenge. But also, I mean, for for for, for the factory, for oh, um, more generally, um, you know, for Airbus, we. We track the you know the progress through um, you know uh, value proofing in di different business verticals. Um, we follow the market trends, of course, and uh, often we try to be uh, proactive. Um, sometimes we find ourselves to be early adopters. This is the case with uh, private cellular, and also influencers because we like to, to you know to go back to the standard, to go back to the vendors and. Uh, influence the the roadmaps uh, in, in a way and Hakim I mean maybe if we rewind uh four years ago to to lose and this decision you took then I think the decision was to uh, you know whether it was immediate or, or, or it took time to to manage the network itself as well just just what is the strategy uh you know then and now has it has it changed very much with regards to this the strategy has not changed. The scale has. Um, four years ago, we started very small with a small pilot um, across this precise location in Toulouse, uh, uh, delivering um, a new technology uh, for our um, one of our businesses, uh, which is the test and validation of the airplanes. Um, so it. We did it. Uh, it was successful, but in parallel to this, uh, we have started, you know, embarking many other use cases um, from manufacturing, um, manufacturing execution to quality inspection, um, indoor and outdoor, uh, which includes uh, AR and VR, uh, of course. We have many more uh, pressure adjacent tests. Um, and, um, you know, all of these um, different kind of uh, verticals that we have in our manufacturing day-to-day -day work, uh, we, we run them through precise benchmarks um, uh, in, in different, different locations, different positions. Uh, position, when I speak position, position in the shop floor, uh, position around the airplane itself, inside the airplane and so forth. Um, so yeah, most of them have proved to be uh, efficient uh, with, with LTE uh, back in the days. Uh, in in this kind of you know complex environment, uh, industrial and harsh in environment that we have, uh, we've done also other other things. Uh, we we have played with Airbus Defence and Space on a, a large pan-European mission critical um, project, uh, which is which really um, a successful demonstrator called Broadway. This was involving roaming and uh, quality of service uh, preservation inside the network you know, when roaming from public to private or from country to, to country. Um, you know, this kind of innovation is, 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 we'd like to think that we are trying to take this to the next step today. Huh? 
uh, we have this kind of needs today you know, for not only for mission critical uh, communication, but also for you know, supply chain, for example, um, and, and, and things like this. Uh, so we also have today deliver, we are sorry, delivering um, AMR or AGV connectivity uh, in various Airbus plants and also following the Airbus uh, A3 to one XLR program, uh, which is you know the the new airplane we are building. This comes with the disruptive reshuffling of several production lines, um, with much higher automation, and and this is your you know 5G becomes key in this kind of uh, um, uh, deployment. So the story today is things are scaling, um, and uh, we we want to achieve even more. Uh, um, with, with private 5G uh, offering across all our facilities and even all our divisions, uh, including helicopters and, and defense and space. <clears throat> so, so Hakim, just, just um, you mentioned use cases there, and we will uh, come to those again, and some of the innov innovation you do, innovation what you do, just in terms of, purely in terms of kind of scale, in terms of sites. I mean, we wrote, I think a while ago that you had six or seven, that you were you were moving up to maybe eleven with the UK and Spain involved. Just give us a sense of how many deployments are kind of uh, uh, alive or pending, uh, you know, across Europe now. So today we have um, most of our deployments in France and Germany. Um, this is where we have our biggest uh, assembly lines but also started to deploy the shop floor areas uh, that, that that started um, before summer in San Nazaire, you, you, you know this size probably, but Toulouse, Hamburg, Remen, Stade, San Nazaire, Nantes, uh, this, these are the, 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 key, uh, the, the key locations where we have started. 2023 is the start of UK, um, so Broughton, but we have, you know, the picture is much bigger to be honest, uh, because today we are also asked to align with our facilities in the US, uh, North America, so Mobile in Alabama, Canada, Mirabel, uh, next to Montreal. We have also 5G in Tianjin in China. Uh, so, and similarly, we are also spreading this, you know, um, design, say, uh, to, to cross division uh, strategies. Uh, we, you know, we have, demand from uh, helicopters uh, in, in Marignan, this is a, a location in south of France, next to Marseille, in Donauwert in Germany. So there is, a, you know, there is a reusability strategy as well, cross division. Not all the divisions will have the same requirements, of course, when we speak about defense and space, but helicopters is very much close to what we do. Huh? So we use the same tools. Um, this could be much easier. So yeah, the, the picture is much bigger than the, the, than um, than um, the eleven sites that uh, you had in mind. Got you. And and just I mean another one kind of in terms of specifics. Here, can you talk about you know vendor partners? I mean who you're I mean who you're closest with for for core and ran? If there is a such a thing, or you're kind of mixing it up a whole lot, you're looking at open ran strategies, this kind of stuff. Can you say and mention something on that? Give it fill, fill us in a little bit there. Yeah, of course. Um, when we started four years ago, we've, we've partnered with Ericsson. Uh, um, and we, we have deployed with a, on the basis of a, a, an Ericsson uh, packet core and built build the backbone, uh, relying on the Airbus uh, LAN, WAN security infrastructures that we already have. Um, it's a partner of choice, of course, uh, the solutions that they have work, uh, we have proved them. But to, having said all this, uh, we are we have to be open and agile. Um, in the you know we open the door to other traditional and new vendors. Uh, so Nokia, um, and Core, of course, uh, we we've been visiting them in Finland just a, a week ago, as, as well as Ericsson. Uh, we we know Atonet, uh, Mavenir. Um, so we are not closing the door to anybody, to be honest. Um, you have to be careful on the migration plans, of course, and prepare the, the road for, for this. Today, we are moving from, you know, uh, one particular, particular level of the technology to the next one. And um, this is quite key. So we will go, go through um, technical assessment. Um, so, but technical IT requirements that we have, they, they, they are quite strong, but also the, the non-technical requirements about you know, manageability of the solution, uh, life cycle management, 
uh, remote access uh, and, and so forth. Um, you know, all, the, all, all of this uh, has to be taken into account. Now there is also the newcomers in the market. Uh, so we are also strongly looking into the, at the core side, at least at this stage uh, on the hybrid models uh, provided by the hyperscalers. Um, so typically Azure, the 5G uh, Mac solution that they, they, they have. AWS, why not? It's still, uh, to me, uh, quite niche uh, and, and targeting especially the, the, the US market. But there, there is something happening there that we need to be close to. And on the open run side, to be very fair, um, as a technology, it's something that is of interest, not essentially specifically for the in-house dig digital means, huh? because you know, at the end of the day, you need good quality network, but not uh, any other specifics uh, that comes from open RAN. But if we look at the broader Airbus, uh, Airbus Defense and Space, uh, satellites, non-terrestrial networks, this is where open RAN can play its role within uh, our um, organization. Um, for me, open RAN, you know, as is, as it as it stands, just for private networks, is not enough. Uh, if if we look at open RAN as um, you know the few 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 components are interesting there, there as the uh, RIC, uh, the RAN intelligent controller that opens up APIs, and th this kind of things are interesting, of course, and creates more market for share for you know startups that can create value uh, uh, added services you know like localization based on uh, open run uh, uh, apis this is this is the cool part of open run but today as a um, technology that we deploy for critical uh, you know uh, infrastructure it's it's too early to, to say okay and just to, just on that you mentioned uh, the hyperscalers there you mentioned various kind of core vendors and and traditional kind of network vendors as well is the, is the message then that so far as kind of mission critical kind of manufacturing operations goes you are you know uh, you are comfortable with the solutions you're being provided now and that really this the the, the AD, aws style stuff perhaps the azure stuff is 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 interesting but maybe for different uh elements different um deployments is that right it's it's more complex than that to be honest because um we all of them tend to go to the the hybrid model so part of the infrastructure will be on premises part of them part of it will be on the cloud huh? so the traditional and the new ones um when we look at the hyperscaler model it's much more integrated it's it's integrated as a you know as a service inside the the global cloud offering this is this is the, the interesting part um, of course, in terms of cybersecurity itself, today it's a it's it's difficult to for um, you know a critical company like Airbus. I can also speak about you know uh, nuclear power plants, EDF in France as well. Uh, they use private LTE. It's not something that you know cloud-based solution will n definitely not be accepted as is uh, in a simple manner. Um, now it's when it's fully integrated. Um, you know we talk about private cloud platforms that are completely cybersecurity reviewed and stamped that, you know, that are um, another leg of, uh, of the Airbus network. This, 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 is, this, is the, um, this is fundamentally is very different from the public cloud itself. So it's early days, uh, but it's interesting. Uh, when you look at, the, uh, at the, the level of automation that the hyperscalers can offer, of course. Uh, uh, compared to the traditional vendor, this okay. is you know this is my gut feeling. Yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting. And Hakim, just to just to talk about um, the 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 rollouts and this kind of stuff again, are you? Um, I mean, is there a priority in terms of rolling out kind of LTE, perhaps to new sites or or five G, perhaps in the first instance to new sites, or is the priority um, to upgrade existing LTE sites to five G? Or is it to do both of these things? Uh, to me, it's both. But uh, whenever we can do 5G NSA, for example, uh, we, we do it. Uh, uh, th this is on the basis of availability of spectrum, of course. Uh, uh, if, um, you know, 5G SA today uh, for, for Airbus is in the design phase uh, and, and, and will be delivered through uh, a pilot, certainly, Q2, Q3 next year. Um, 
you know, of course, we need to be careful. Huh? The, the, this, this system is a, a production network. If uh, a production line stops uh, because of, of uh, a technology that is not ready, it will be it will be painful. So uh, we have to choose the tech that works end to end uh, in different location in, with different regulations. Uh, you know, this means today that we have to be careful on the feature gap uh, that we an analyze from you know the five G core. Uh, SA uh, solution compared to what we already, uh, you know, uh, have today, which is 5G EPC or NSA um, that, that delivers and that works, you know, uh, fundamentally, this is the, the, the core question, but um, we will go to the 5G SA. Uh, actually, today, most of the, offer, the, the offering is dual core, uh, which is 5G SA and 4G SA and some NSA in the middle. So it's it's a straight evolution to be honest and um we will do it through testing uh, there is some gaps that we know uh, about um but it will not stop our strategy uh. okay and and you mentioned earlier about reusability and the kind of ability to you know what works in 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 uh, one plant works in a similar plant essentially is that, is that the case i mean are, are you looking at it now as a, almost like a cookie cutter for, for one of a better term, kind of, uh, you know, solution which you can install quite easily now in in yes. similar sites. So, um, first of all, yes, because we have built um, the backbone. Um, the, the 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 backbone is the most important uh, um, uh, step, which which means that uh, we have a design pattern um, that we can roll out a new site very very quickly. Uh, this design pattern is stamped, huh? uh, so stamped by different layers of uh, uh, my IT architects, my IT colleagues, cybersecurity colleagues, and so forth. It's fully integrated in the, you know, the other with the other technologies that we have, the the other backbones uh, that that we have. Uh, it's a new it's a new technology, but completely overlaid and, and integrated into that. Now, um, if we need to roll out a new site, we, we know exactly we have a template. We come there, we do some radio study, and it's deployed. It's a matter of probably a few weeks. Uh, um, uh, now, if you, we go to the use cases um, the story, um, you know, 80% of our industrial sites use the same digital tools. So the answer is yes, you know, it's, it's, it's very similar. But still, we we you know we will have some specifics that uh, would require closer vertical integration. Uh, but but to me, this is the fun uh, part, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and so, uh, yeah. Hakim, I mean, I, I ask as well because you know I came off a session uh, at the private networks forum last time out with with you know some SIs and this kind of stuff. And the and the the message from them was that uh, you know the, the integration part is where the uh, you know is the difficult is the difficult piece and that uh, you know deploying for even within one enterprise one site and another site it's it's complex is that it sounds to me that um the message from you now is that it is but you've got a kind of a recipe to uh to, to work through that now and, and you know what you're doing and you're you're comfortable with the process kind of thing is that is that correct well, in a way, yes. And it's 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 the question of who is delivering. You know, the the, the internal people know <laughs> know better their own um, infrastructure than the uh, external SIs. Of course, you know, when it comes to uh, a new system integrator that that comes into play, you know, there is a, some transition phase, uh, takeover, and and so forth. Understanding the complex infrastructure that we have takes some time. Uh, it took me uh, some time when I joined Airbus. Uh, it definitely takes some time for, to a lot of people. Um, you know, and the way that Airbus works uh, is, um, you know, we have technology experts and the dedicated experts for a lot of different technologies, architects, specialists that do internally decide uh, on the roadmaps that do the design of the architecture. And at the end of the day, the SI is you know uh, either fully integrated uh, you know th through change management for example you know I build the new design but the change will be executed by the system integrator 
but still the Airbus experts will are key here because they are the only ones that can decide on if a technology is good or not for uh, the company. That's that's the message. Yeah. But but we accept the help, of course, and we we work closely with the the other companies, our operators, uh, system integrators. You know, we 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 need them. Uh, 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 you know, it's it's just that the decision ma making uh, process has to be internal uh, in a way. You know. Yeah, understood. Okay, and and before Hakim, we'll talk a little bit about use cases. Before we do that, I mean, it's not just cellular. Obviously, you've got you know, and and you know, that's that's clearly not the case. But I mean, and. We had a presentation from Patrick Castagnino uh, doing the Airbus thing uh, last uh, a previous session we ran, and he presented slides with with the kind of the myriad of of connectivity technologies you're playing with in Airbus, and and you know there's Ethernet and Wi-Fi obviously in there in there Wi-Fi is developing as well in 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 kind of parallel, and there's also uh, you guys have got. Um, LoRa installations, you've got Sigbox uh, installations. Just explain to me that kind of uh, that kind of soup, if you like, of 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 connectivity technologies and how they all play. You know whether whether uh, you know cellular comes in over the top and some of those are not needed anymore, or actually, you know, th this is all very deliberate and very specific, and everything has its place. Mm. Um. It's a good question. Um, not all the technology will have uh, uh, its place in 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 the in you know currently or in the the near future. Um, now, let's let's talk about those that are already disappearing. Uh, we thanks to private uh, LTE, we have replaced Tetrapod, for example, in the in the last year. So this is an obsolete technology uh, that, that that has twenty years of operations in in Airbus. And, and we have sunsetted this one. Um, LoRa and Sigfox are delivering IoT. Um, and both of them have been chosen through one unique service provider. Huh? Now, why LoRa and Sigfox? Because they don't have exactly the same pattern uh, of, of usage. Uh, Sigfox, first of all, is used for tracking and uh, it's worldwide. Huh? That, that was the, 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 the uh, why, why we needed the Sigfox. But we do send less messages uh, with, with, with Sigfox um, devices compared to LoRa, because LoRa is more used as a private network inside the campuses. So that is used for you know, multi-metering. And we do send a lot more uh, of, of messages with, with LoRa. Um, when it comes to um, you know, LTE and specifically the LPWA, uh, low power uh, cellular IoT offering, um, we are looking into this. Um, we have a market study that's just been delivered by, um, a, a, um, sorry, a system integrator for us. And, um, you know, we need to prepare the route ahead, to be honest. And uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, argue on which one will be here or not, because at the end of the day, uh, it happens all the time. Uh, technologies disappear and some of them remain and become uh, stronger uh, because they have a better business model behind it. And it's not, you know, it's not Airbus that chooses this. Um, if we look at the cellular IoT, I think this is the next big thing for, for the IoT part of, of Airbus. Of course, it's going to take some time. Um, it's it's not able to replace totally the some of our use cases today and the device availability is quite poor as well but let's look ahead huh? two three years ahead and um surely it will it will come okay and just just for for, for you know purposes of definitions and this kind of stuff because you know i'd see we know what it is and at the same time maybe we don't <laughs> i mean maybe i don't but you know i mean the when you're talking there about you know the lpwa cases are we talking really about you know uh, IoT in the in, in the manufacturing environment rather than IoT on the manufacturing line. Do you see what I mean? The, 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 there's a slight difference there. And in, in is is uh, cellular uh, broadband, you know, LTE and and uh, 5G and mission critical uh, LTE and 5G being brought in specifically for the production line and you know uh, connectivity in the workplace to an extent. But is that is that a correct? Um, differentiation, if you like, between what you're uh, talking about in terms of environmental monitoring 
with, with Sigbox LoRa and potentially cellular IoT down the line? And what you're talking about now with these private network installations? Yeah, we, we also use different kinds of definitions there. Um, and it's not delivering the same the, the same services and and the, the use cases don't have the similar requirements behind them. Uh, uh, low power means um, it has to run on, on, on battery uh, for a long time, uh, but you can just plug it uh, on a machine, uh, you know, that measures vibration, for example, it's an external system. When we talk about industrial IoT, we speak about, you know, broadband. Um, uh, we talk about much more complex uh, connectivity subjects uh, like robotics, AGVs that need, you know, that require um, a much stronger kind of um, signal uh, propagation and much higher bandwidth. Uh, so the data rates are not the same. Uh, but yeah, but they, they are complementary. If we look at the shop floor, uh, if we look at the shop floor data globally, you know, the Wi-Fi, let's say, and 5G will deliver this uh, uh, high-end data acquisition from the machines um, inside the, the industrial protocols themselves. Where, where, whereas, um, you know, um, low power uh, LPWA will deliver the environment sensing uh, for the same machine, uh, but uh, but. They are complementary. Yeah. Okay. And Hakim, just just you talk there about you know robots and AGVs, and that gets into some of these kind of use cases which are developing much much more um, ably with 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 cellular. I'd, I'd suggest. But I mean, you know, I, I understand as well from from Airbus that you know ninety. I think the quote is ninety five percent of your needs are served now by LTE by private LTE. Is that is that right? I mean, is that as so far as industry four goes today, LTE works, it provides stability, you know, and performance in the right kind of quantities, uh, you know, and, and so, so the question is, I, I guess, what is the shift with 5G? Is it stuff we don't know yet? Or is it just scaling up the amount of, of AGVs and robots and this kind of stuff? Is that where 5G is then required? I suspect it's both again, but, but just give me a sense of that. Um, for, for the ninety-five percent figure, I think it's 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 from three years ago. So it's a yes and no. Um, uh, you know, today to me, the more speed we have, the better the user experience overall. So five uh, G is better than four G. Um, uh, but everything has to be looked at from the end-to-end -end perspective again. Um, so five G, as it is today, is another G which is faster. Now, if we look at the more complex uh, features that are coming, uh, like uh, you know URLLC or low, low latency, uh, that are not yet built in, uh, in, in and not not in, in the vendors as a final pro products, um, you know we do have some use cases like uh, AR with uh, remote rendering uh, that that will need this. Um, when we look at the industrial protocols uh, for robotics, um, all, all to do with the TSN or time sensitive networking is also very important. And that will be delivered by the next generation of 5G. Um, so uh, to me, we can do things with LTE. We are doing things with LTE, but we are expecting even more from 5G. And uh, that, that will come step by step. If we look also in, if we open the, the product itself. Huh? Uh, if we look at what what is LTE compared to 5G, um, the the way you know the older standard is defined is more rigid in a way. You know, the, you know everything is more complex as well. You know, we we did diameter triple uh, uh, A. Um, it's more complex to to to, to configure. Uh, when it comes to 5G, we look at more this uh, APIs, openness, and you know the way we could automate uh, the, the the core network with other uh, IT to tools. So it's you know it's it's both. We we need to be ready for, for for the next generation, to be honest. But we are building on the basis of um, LTE today. Okay, and I think I was going to ask you about the release 17, 18 stuff. You you've answered it very well there. So so um. You know, I mean, I guess the uh, the the question is around you know uh, use cases. As well, we've we've said we'll get to this. I mean, you know, which of these use cases? Uh, and you've mentioned a bunch of them, but which of these use cases are? I guess, do you activate first on the network? Which of the use cases are are you, are you seeing really good traction with now? Mm. 
Um, yeah. To be honest, there is many of them, and we try to solve a lot of them at the same time. This is this is how it works. We have demands from from the businesses, but uh, when we look at the numbers, we we look at uh, you know the the value comes from the numbers, and the more uh, endpoints I have connected in LTE or 5G, the best uh, uh, you know the, the the better is my my uh, my network. Um, so today. The biggest subject is MES, so Manufacturing Execution System, so worker augmentation, for example. So workers use, use digital tools uh, to build the airplanes, and they need strong connectivity. This is the main topic. Um, AGVs are coming more and more. This is, this is uh, cool to see. Uh, we have robots as well. Um, you know, digital twin is, is much more complex when we look at uh, the Airbus uh, uh, picture. So today for me, MES, manufacturing execution, uh, supply chain logistics uh, with AGVs. Um, also mission critical voice uh, communication. Th these are the, 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 the main domains that, that we treat. Um, robotics uh, will come later. AR and VR already here. Well, we are deploying 1000 uh, smart glasses um, uh, you know, in the worker augmentation uh, domain. Um, this will be both on Wi-Fi and, and 4G, 5G. Okay. So, and, and Hakim, look, I'm going to stop you there. Just, just I think we'd, um, we're about up on time. Just very quickly, there is a perception that, you know, the this market, this industry for market is, is progressing at different speeds in, you know, Europe, say, the US, China, this kind of stuff. Do you have a, a sense of that? And what is, what is your message for the uh, manufact manufacturing se sector at large, which is, um, you know, uh, uh, looking at this, looking at 5G as a technology and wondering when to start with it and if to start with it. Just, just what, what's, your, what's your message to the rest of the manufacturing market? Um, um, try it, <laughs> try it. Uh, it can be at small scale. If you don't understand, you can get help. Um, it, it really brings value. It's not just wireless, it's also services that are built into the, into the technology. And um, you know, the more the merrier as well, because um, it will influence the ecosystem, uh, the regulators and uh, make things cheaper as well. So my message is come in. <laughs> okay. Look, Hakim, thank you. I wish we had more time. It's been really, really uh, great to speak to you and really interesting to hear about what Airbus is doing. That's it, we are at time. Uh, apologies if we've overrun a bit. We have another session starting shortly about digital twins in manufacturing as it goes, uh, where I'll be joined by the Digital Twin Consortium and Freshwave Group. Um, and that starts in a couple of minutes. So thanks to Hakeem uh, for now, and I'll see everyone hopefully in just a moment. Thank you. Thanks.